Now, Buddhism seems to treat men and women differently, and some would say in totally different ways too. Men are treated, um, basically men and women are not treated equally in mm -hmm. Buddhism. What do you think about that? Well, in all human societies, I mean almost all human societies so far, we have this kind of gender discrimination. I don't know where it comes from, but I mm -hmm. hope that we can do something about it. And Buddhism is no exception. We find that preference is given to males in the monasteries, in the colleges, in the mm. schools, in Buddhist studies programs. That's why we have Sakyadita, to try to raise awareness that the Buddha mm. taught a path that was equally accessible to men and women. So we have to work to make sure that we implement the Buddha's teachings and provide equal access to the Dharma for men and women alike, beginning from boys and girls. And girls should be equally encouraged to practice the Dharma mm -hmm. and to learn all they can, mm -hmm. right? If, it, if it's, it's such a beautiful path, why not make it open to everyone equally? So wherever we see discrimination or oppression, we should try to address it with wisdom, mm -hmm. with compassion, um, and that's why we have Sakerita. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you set up a non-profit organization, yes. if I understood it correctly, right. Jam Yang. Jam Yang Foundation. Jam. Yeah, yes. What does it do? It provides educational opportunities for girls and women, uh, including nuns, in developing countries. Many of our programs, have, we've started 15 educational programs in India. Most of them are for nuns up in the Himalayas, where women have very few or no educational opportunities. So we have study programs in all of these different monasteries. Some of the nuns are here at the Sakyadita Conference and they've been studying for 20 years through our programs and developing as teachers uh, for the society in general. And we have three schools in Bangladesh as well. We have scholarship programs. We've sent people to study in Thailand and in, um, in, in India, in Delhi University and so forth, other universities. So we try to help women to study and learn and hopefully to develop as teachers of Buddhism and as community um, commu resources for the community. Mm. Now Einstein once said Buddhism has the characteristics of what would be expected in a cosmic religion for the future. Do you agree with that? Ah. Well, I think that there's certain universal values mm -hmm. that are important for all human beings. Values like loving kindness and compassion, wisdom, and, and Buddhism really has a lot to offer this. For example, the, the, His Holiness the Dalai Lama often says, my religion is loving kindness. Mm -hmm. He says that people don't need to become Buddhists. Mm. If you're a Christian, be a good Christian. If you're a Muslim, be a good Muslim. If you're a Hindu, be a good Hindu, right? Or if you're a Jew, be a good Jew. But certain human values are common to all of us, right? Mm -hmm. We all want to be peaceful. We all want to be compassionate. We all want to be loving individuals. So in this way, because Buddhism teaches these wonderful human values without requiring someone to become a Buddhist, mm -hmm. right? we don't care about membership. We care about human happiness. Mm -hmm. So remain, you know, follow your own religion, mm -hmm. but try to implement these values in daily life. That's the most important thing, no matter what label we give ourselves. If we call ourselves a Buddhist, but we're you know, violating uh, people's rights, if we're unkind, if we're exploiting people in our business or in our family, then, I mean, that's a problem. We have to live up to our own values, right? Even if someone is not a Buddhist, but they live Buddhist values, mm -hmm. that's good karma and it will pay off in the future. <laughs> Where do we go when we die? Depends on what you do in this lifetime. If you're a good, kind, ethical individual, then you'll have a good chance of being reborn as a human being, which is the best possible opportunity for mm -hmm. spiritual development. Just now you talk about going to temples and making donations mm -hmm. and putting gold on the Buddha. Mm -hmm. A lot of Thais actually worship amulets amulets as well. What do you think about that? <laughs> well, I think that the Dharma is our best protection, in fact. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I know I don't want to criticize any mm -hmm. cultural mm -hmm. beliefs, mm -hmm. but in fact, I think that the teachings of the Buddha are more profound than that. That the real protection is to practice the teachings, to keep the five precepts, to develop loving-kindness and compassion, mm -hmm. 
and to practice loving kindness and compassion in our lives, mm -hmm. to study the Dharma, develop our own inner wisdom, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, day by day, try to, to follow the teachings in every action, being mindful, even when washing the dishes, even when climbing the stairs, even while waiting for the bus. Mm -hmm. We can practice the teachings like that. And I think people, if you really practice, you'll see a difference. You'll see a change in yourself. And you'll see a, a positive change in, in your relationships with other people. Mm -hmm. Even dealing with difficult situations like a difficult boss or difficult co-workers. Yeah, try it. What do you think about nuns or monks playing the internet or watching TV? I think it's distracting. But they're, they're different. I mean, on the internet, there are also many positive things. Now you can get the entire Tripitaka online yeah. in many languages. That's a good thing. So mm -hmm. say you want to learn about, today we're talking about the f four Brahma Viharas. You say, oh, I can't remember. I remember three, I don't remember the fourth. Tuk, 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 tuk. Uh -huh. You can find the four Brahma Viharas online with a nice explanation. You can find different translations and you can compare them. So it's actually very useful for, for learning Buddhism. You have mm -hmm. to be discriminating about which websites you consult. You met and learned from the Dalai Lama himself yes. too, right? Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Well, when I went to study in Dharamsala, he had set up a Tibetan library where Western people could learn Buddhism. Mm -hmm. It began in 1971. I arrived in 1972. And this was such a blessing because he arranged three hours a day of Buddhist teachings for us with a great teacher, right? So he looked after us, uh -huh. Western students, provided teachers and translators and a beautiful environment where we could learn Buddhism. So out of those classes came many, many wonderful Buddhist teachers and scholars. Mm -hmm. And he would also give public teachings periodically, uh, frequently. And we can all attend and learn from him. And of course, we learn from his life too, because he's such a great example. I mean, I've, since 1972, I've never seen one trace of self-interest in him. Mm -hmm. He's completely dedicated to other, other beings, helping others to create happiness and to be happier people and to practice the Dhamma. So I appreciate him very much, mm -hmm. wise and compassionate. Mm -hmm. How can we implement Buddhist teachings in our everyday life? Well, That's I think we should all meditate a little bit in the morning. Sit down for at least five minutes, 15 would be better. <laughs> and get centered, relax, look inside, watch our breathing, and just settle down because the world is going so quickly. Modern life has become so hectic. We have to take some time to look inside. If we don't, we'll just become as crazy as everybody else, running from here to there, you know, uh, with no time to actually think about anything deeper in life. But in here, that's it's so I mean. hard to is stop it here or thinking. Is it here? <laughs> exactly. It's so exactly. hard. Even if, if no. we sit, all right, mm -hmm. I'm in one place, but it's so hard to stop thinking up here. That's why we meditate, right? We sit down in the morning, you learn to take time to look inside. Hmm? Watch your breathing, learn to concentrate, learn to focus. It's so important, it's so practical. Otherwise, we get carried away. Do but you have any special technique? so that our mind will be here and now? I recommend Anapanasati. Anapanasati means mindfulness of breathing. It's the simplest and most direct practice. It's the core of meditation practice in all Buddhist traditions. Simply watching the inflow and outflow of our own breathing. Mm -hmm. And we can count up to 10. It's so good for working people. It's so good for mothers. It's so good for for senior citizens, it's so good for students, it's so good for everybody. It helps us to calm down, mm -hmm. uh, calm the mind, mm -hmm. learn to keep the mind focused on one thing at a time. Become more mindful more with mindful. that. Yes, yeah. and calmer, more serene, hmm? mm -hmm. more peaceful. Less apt to fly off the handle, <laughs> right? Less apt to get distracted because we, can, we learn how to focus single-pointedly. And then I also recommend going for a 10-day meditation course now and again, at mm -hmm. least once a year. 
We should, I think in Thailand here you can take a holiday and go for a meditation course. There's so many wonderful meditation centers in Thailand. No excuses, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are free or by donation. Mm -hmm. Where in the United States you have to pay heaps of money to go mm -hmm. to a meditation course here in Thailand. You can go for free. <laughs> Isn't it That's wonderful, right? right? So you all have access, you all have these, mm -hmm. this incredible cultural treasure. Mm -hmm. So it would be a shame to waste it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Buddhism has a lot to offer, but as Venerable Lakshya said, you have to practice it in order to savor the joy of it. So if you haven't already started, maybe it's time that you start today, right now. See you next time on Viewpoint. สวัสดีค่ะ